Well, hello everyone, and welcome back to the Great Ace Attorney Chronicles. Previously, we finished the second case of the first game in this collection. And, you know what? It was pretty dang satisfying, even if it didn't have any trial section at all. Which was a huge surprise to me. I was really blindsided by that, but now it looks like our protagonists are finally going to land in London. Good old Great Britain, so... Let's go ahead and continue. Now, the adventure of the runaway room. Let's begin. Oh, I see Baker Street on that text. Nice. Of the late last century, I am faced by the events of a certain bitter winter. A murder in a carriage as it sped through dense London fog. Oh, in the dead of night. Right. The victim okay, and then. the perpetrator were the only ones inside. There were multiple witnesses to the crime itself. However, none could have imagined at the time that such a seemingly obvious case as this would end in such a horrendous manner. My friend, Mr. Herlock Jones, once said of the incident, I believe that perhaps that case was indeed the prelude. The beginning of a long concerto that impressive Japanese student and I were to play together. Now, are these quotes from the books or not? <laughs> Maybe it's a mix of both. Amazing. Is is this That really child does not have my permission to look station. so cool. Railway station. I refuse. I've never seen such an enormous building before. <laughs> and look at all the steam locomotives. This country is incredible. So this is the capital of Great Britain. So, where to? Oh, hello. Climb aboard. I'll take you wherever you want to go. In that case, um, the Supreme Court in Whitehall, if you wouldn't mind. My pleasure. I suppose you're uh, visiting students from abroad, eh? Yes. <laughs> Thought so. Well then, I hope you enjoy your stay. And welcome to the center of the world, Great Britain's mighty capital, London. Well, that was nice. Oh well, so they actually made it there without incident. <laughs> also. This is... So, wow, this... Taking a few liberties here. I was thinking this would be... A very historically grounded, but this is... Pretty ridiculous. So the Lord Chief Justice is here, huh? Is this supposed to be inside Big Ben? When was Big Ben made? Now I know Big Ben is big, but I don't think it's this big either. What an incredible place. It's so imposing. It's, it's almost suffocating. This place is breathtaking. It looks like a fortress. There are some stone buildings like this in Japan now, of course. But they've only been built in the few short decades since we opened our borders to the outside world. An authentic example like this has quite a different impact, wouldn't you agree? A far cry from the wood and paper most of our buildings are constructed from. 
it's certainly unfamiliar. But I think there's more to the differences than just construction materials. What is this place again? This is the Lord Chief Justice's office, Naruhoto-san, in the Supreme Court of Great Britain. The Lord Chief Justice. We had instructions to report here at this time. If circumstances were different, we were supposed to let the Lord Chief Justice know that we had arrived from Japan. But Kazuma can't. No. So instead, we are here in a different capacity. As envoys, we to report the news of Kazuma-sama's death. Yes. And having delivered his or her message, an envoy's duty is done. So we'd have to return to Japan. If we want to remain here in Great Britain, I have to take Kazuma's place as the law student selected for the study tour. Yes, which means you need the requisite qualifications as a lawyer. Which is what I've been studying for. Here in Great Britain, it is the Lord Chief Justice who appoints lawyers. So that's the second reason why we're here, to have you officially rec recognized as a lawyer. It's the only way that we'll be able to remain here in London. I hope I'm up to scratch. Ah, good morning. Sorry for keeping you. I'm ready to see someone real cool looking. Yeah, that's, that's alright. I like the baby poop green clothes. Huh. I trust you aren't too exhausted after your long voyage from Japan. Seems I'm 1 hour, 12 minutes, and 47 seconds late. My apologies. Oh, no, no, don't mention it. We are never happier than when we're standing around with nothing much to do. How fortunate. So, introductions. I am Male Strongheart. Right, right, okay. Big manly man right over here. Lord Chief Justice of the British Empire. Uh, I feel like a little mouse under an elephant's foot. Is this the big bad? I'm getting Damon Gant vibes from him. Not, not the least of which because this man's job is literally the equivalent to what Damon Gant had going on too. Come on, Mr. Naruhoto, don't be a mouse. Oh, um, it's an honor to meet you, Lord Chief Justice Strongheart. I'm Ryunosuke Norohodo from the Empire of Japan. Well, Mr. Norohodo. Welcome to London, the capital of our glorious British Empire. Were you just keeping birds back there? On sync with... with the, okay. Uh, yes, thank you. Wow, I guess we're free to look around then. Let's absolutely do that. Tell me about these knights. Look at these menacing metal giants facing each other across the room. I believe they're, yes, they're suits of armor. Oh, right. I thought maybe they were like the lion dogs we have in Japan guarding shrine gates. Those are called Komenu. No, not at all. In fact, in Europe, suits of armor like these are always possessed by evil spirits, you know? And they roam around in the middle of the night. What kind of books have you been reading? Really? Is there nothing you don't know, Miss Susato? This book tells me everything I need to know about everything. If you're ever unsure, just ask. She get that incredible tome. Wait, hold on, did I just see that right? 
Yo! No way! We have the technology! We got three screen panning, not just two! Oh, that's a first! Why am I so hyped over something so mundane and simple? Just look at all the naughty books packed together on these shelves. They go from floor to ceiling. And they're all books that you couldn't hope to come by in Japan. It's like a dream. Yes, a very bad dream. They're not all about British law either. There are books about the judicial systems of other Western nations. France, Germany, Spain, Holland. What about Russia? Why do you ask? I was wondering about asking the Lord Chief Justice how you say wardrobe in Russian. What do you think? I think perhaps it's a thought best abandoned. What about the nations of Alabast or... Wait, no, Alabast didn't exist then. That was a split from a unified country. What, what was the name? What, what, were the, what were the made up nation names? In the investigations games. I remember Gen Fa, but what were the other two? Eh. This must be the Lord Chief Justice's desk. I believe it's made of marble. It looks more like an over the top tombstone that's toppled over to me. I think that's your fanciful imagination at work again, Mr. Narahodo. It feels like everything that's normally made of wood and paper at home is made of bricks and stone here. I know. That's why this place feels so overbearing, I'm sure. Yeah, I think a YouTube comment pointed out to me that, um, you can tell whether or not Ryunosuke and Susato are supposed to be speaking English or Japanese by the honorifics they use. If it's Mr. and Miss, they're speaking English. Is this some kind of clock? Actually, I, I think we might be inside some sort of giant clock. But those gears are larger than anything you'd find on a steam locomotive, even. It's eerie. Do you think clocks are some sort of hobby of his? The Lord Chief Justice, I mean? Well, boys do enjoy fiddling around with machines, don't they? I'm not sure you could fiddle with cogs that size, and I'm certain you couldn't call him a boy. Still, it's amazing how little noise the cogs make, considering how large they are. There's actually something quite soothing about their precise rhythm. Uh, maybe it's just the whole Sherlock Holmes thing, but I'm suddenly reminded of the climax to the movie The Great Mouse Detective by Disney. I actually watched that for the first time, like, last year. It was actually really good. I actually liked it a lot. Um, what, what, what's his name? Uh, Tim Curry voiced the villain in that. He was great. Wait, was it Tim Curry or Jim Cummings? Uh, look it up. I'm too lazy to do that. You, you look it up. Look up the villain in The Great Mouse Detective. He's, he's a good actor. Good actor. Alright. Sir, I have something to show you. Oh. Oh. This might be too soon, actually. So, what are your impressions of our capital so far? How do you like London? Oh, um, well, um, help? I've been so nervous ever since I got here that I can't remember a single thing about the city. It's simply splendid, isn't it, Mr. Naruhoto? Oh? We had a wonderful view of some of London's streets from the carriage on the way here from that station. Everything is so impressive and grand. I must say I'm almost lost for words. I'm glad to hear you like it. 
The city boasts tramways, piped water and gas, even cables supplying electricity. We spearhead every revolutionary new technology in the world. Every visitor to London is astounded. Huh. Right. Oh yes, astounded is the word. Thanks for saving me there, Susato-san. And everyone seems so jolly and full of vigor. Yes. There is much excitement about the upcoming Great Exhibition we will be hosting here in London. Great Exhibition? Cultural and technological achievements from around the globe are to be exhibited here in our great city. It will be the greatest spectacle of its kind in history, and will make Paris's World Fair look like a toy shop. I was about to say it sounded like that. Gosh, I can hardly imagine how magnificent it's going to be. Great Britain's capital city is nothing but magnificent. London is the center of the modern world. I mean, if you do say so yourself... The sun will never set on our great empire. Perhaps it is fate that in these progressive times we welcome visitors from the land of the rising sun. Um, Lord Chief Justice, I think you were expecting the student of law for this study tour, weren't you? Absolutely. A Mr. Kazuma Asogi, if my memory serves. So, I've been meaning to talk about this forever, but it really, really bothers me that this game is not doing the name order correct for Japanese names. The Japanese put family name first, a personal name second. This should be Asogi Kazuma. Mikotoba Susato, Naruhodo Ryunosuke, and that just sounds so much more natural and correct in every way to me. I've just trying to be going with it, but man, I, I don't like it. <laughs> That's right. The British government has already been telegraphed a full report on the situation. I understand the young man lost his life aboard the steamship bound for our shores. That's amazing. The news reached him before we even arrived. My country naturally extends its deepest condolences to yours. Oh, thank you. And you honored this appointment specifically to inform me of the news. Yes. We are here in the capacity of envoys from Japan to report the sad news in person. They tell me you Japanese are people of protocol and courtesy, and I see that's true. And it is with some regret that I must inform you that the death of the young lawyer means this study tour arrangement can no longer proceed. If you would just hear us out, Lord Strongheart. What do you have to say, madame? It's about the study tour. Mr. Naruhodo here would like to make a proposal. Would he now? Well, Mr. Naruhodo... This is it, then. The moment of truth. Oh! I thought presenting the band might be what starts this conversation, but... Lord Strongheart, may I show you this? To accept this item, issue her a seat, examine it thoroughly, and make a formal statement of my findings. Would require something in the region of 24 seconds of my time. Sorry? Does the item warrant 24 seconds of my time, Mr. Naruhodo? Let's leave it for now. Okay, it's, it's low-hanging fruit, but I'm gonna pick it anyway. In the amount of time he said all that, he could have accomplished it. Mm. 
The thing is, Lord Justice, um, Lord Stronhart, I was wondering if perhaps you would consider allowing the study tour to go ahead. Don't misunderstand me. Britain would ideally like to see the tour go ahead. But without a lawyer from your country, there is nothing to be done. Well, in that case, what if there was someone else? Another lawyer from Japan, I mean. Is there something I don't know? Um... Only a single lawyer was invited to Great Britain from your country. And that was Mr. Asogi. At least that is what I've been led to understand. Well, um... The thing is... This really isn't going, going, going well at all. I just can't seem to find the right words to say to this man. Mr. Naruhoto? I could ruin things here if I'm not careful. What am I going to say? If there is someone else here from Japan who could be described as a lawyer, it's... Who in their right mind would ever pick any of these other options? It's Susato. It, it can probably only be... Uh, yes, Miss Susato. <laughs> this was worth it. An unusual introduction. But I presume you mean this charming lady beside you. You're a lawyer, are you? That look she's giving me. After all the days of hard work she put in to help me study. I can't let her down now. Uh, I think that's quite enough joking. Don't you, Lord Strongheart? My real answer is... It's me. I can do it. Is that so? I mean, I don't actually have any qualifications as such, but... No qualifications, you say? And yet you still claim to be a lawyer. I, I have acted as a lawyer in court before. Only once, as it happens. And I had Kazuma to help me, and I was the accused, but glossing over the details. I've been spending every spare moment on the journey here to Great Britain studying. I've learned all about British law and court proceedings while I was on board the SS Burya. The voyage from Japan is some 50 days, I believe. Not what you might call a full education. To become a qualified lawyer here in Britain, not only do you need a university degree in law, you must also complete several years of training. I realize it's far too short a period of time, but I can't just go back to Japan. Kazuma, Mr. Osoki's journey had only just begun. Coming here on this study tour was all he thought about. I have to carry on and do everything he planned to do. I know it must sound like I have an overly inflated opinion of myself, but I will do anything to prove that I have what it takes any test you care to set me. Just one chance, that's all I'm asking for. Please. Hmm. <sighs> 31 seconds. Sorry? Your opening statement there, Mr. Naruhoto, it was 31 seconds long. Not too brief, not too protracted. A perfectly judged appeal, I would say which is a skill that would stand you in good stead as a lawyer. Oh, thanks. So you're willing to put those words to trial, are you? Well, I'm all for entertainment. Huh? But let me ask you one thing first, sir. Uh, yes? You say you intend to do everything Mr. Asogi planned to do. Are you firmly set on that path? I think he knows what the secret mission was. Well, yes, that's my intention. I see. 
Am I imagining things? Or did his expression just alter a fraction there all of a sudden? Very well. You have your wish. I'll give you a chance. A test to become a specially certified lawyer. Whether you pass or fail is entirely down to you. Really? Neat. So what form will the test take exactly? Tell me, Mr. Narahodo, what do you consider the role of a lawyer to be? Well, defending people, of course. Well said. So, let's have you defend someone. Huh? Your timing is perfect, in fact. There's an apt trial about to begin later today. No advocate has been appointed for the defense as yet, so this will be welcome news. Hey! God, I love how much they're playing with the formula. We're getting the trial before the investigation? Um, that is if there even is going to be an investigation at all. I don't know. Today? Straight away? If you manage to secure a verdict of not guilty, you'll have passed my test. What could be simpler? Uh, how do I get myself into these situations? Well, could I ask, what sort of trial is it, Lord Stronhart? Hmm, yes, good question. Ah, I remember. It's a murder trial. A murder? An extremely simple case, I understand. You really can't lose. I'm sorry, isn't the... Isn't the... Um... The... What's the word I'm talking... I'm, I'm thinking of? The present? No, the... Premise. The premise of this case is that it was two people in a in a cart and in a carriage, sorry, and multiple people saw it happen. Multiple witnesses. Uh oh, you really can't lose my butt. That's easy to say. But I should mention, just in case. If the defendant is found guilty, he will of course be sentenced to capital punishment. Capital punishment? He'll be, he'll be put to death? Here in Great Britain, murderers are sent to the gallows without exception. You know, I think I really was right on the money that this game is writing for a higher age group than the previous ones. They never really talked about capital punishment at all in the actual series or even the other spin-offs. Oh, this is in the big boy leagues over here. Oh. Presumably you read that much in your short sea-based introduction to British law. We can't possibly agree to such a test. We would be toying with a man's life. I am the Lord Chief Justice, and I've decided it's acceptable. But you can't do that? Can you? There's no need to overcomplicate this. All you have to do is ensure that you don't lose. The defendant may live or die depending on how well I perform in court. If I lose, he'll be hanged. Mr. Narahodo, you've come to me claiming to be a lawyer. How many doves are back there? <laughs> if you want me to take you seriously, you need to prove you're willing to do a lawyer's job. And you say you intend to see through the will of your compatriot, Mr. Asogi. I would like to understand just how far you're willing to go in order to make that happen. 
He's testing my resolve. What's the matter? You've fallen silent. I'm sorry, but time is pressing. The trial begins shortly. I need an answer from you now. What's it to be? What do I say? Do I agree to this absurd test? I'll do it. Alright then. If I have to give you a decision now, my answer is... is... Uh, I can't do it. I can't get the words out. Fifteen seconds. Heh. <laughs> Your decision making needs work if you want to be a lawyer. That was too slow. So it's as I suspected, is it? Sorry? You have noble intentions, but lack the resolve to see them through. The test is cancelled. Thank you for stopping by. Uh-oh. Go and acquire your tickets for passage back to the east tomorrow. This conversation is over. Yes, Lord Strongheart. Thank you for offering me a chance. Mr. Narahoto. I'm sorry, Miss Susato, but what could I do? It's all right, I understand. You do? It's not an easy decision to choose whether to defend a man in these circumstances. But resolve has absolutely nothing to do with it. What are you trying to say, madame? I think what Miss Susato means is that no matter how badly I'd like to be recognized as a lawyer and stay here in Great Britain, to risk another man's life by treating his one and only chance at a trial so trivially would be utterly in unforgivable. And I feel exactly the same way. I'm sure the defendant won't see this trial as a test, as some kind of experiment. A lawyer may fight for his clients in court day after day, but for each one of those clients, the particular day they stand in the dock may be the only chance they have to fight to prove their innocence. No, I was wrong. I'm not qualified to do that job yet. I'm sorry for wasting your precious time, Lord Chief Justice. Wait, Mr. Naruto. I knew that would win him over. Oh, was there something else? It's approximately 20 minutes by carriage to the Old Bailey from here. If you leave immediately, you should still be there in time. But... but I just said that... I was quite serious in what I told you. The defendant in this case has literally no one to advocate for him. What? At this point, he can't hope to find someone to represent him. The trial will begin without a defense. And if that happens, there's only one possible outcome. He will receive the most severe sentence the judge can pass down. But well, that's awful. But that is the truth. Why does it have to be like this? Please don't expect an answer to every question. The cold hard truth of the matter is that there is only one person now with a chance to save this man from a very miserable end. And that is you. And really his only hope? So, what do you say now, madame? Me? Oh, what do you mean, Lord Strongheart? You said it wasn't an easy decision to choose whether to defend a man in these circumstances, and I agree. But in my estimation, it is purely and simply a matter of resolve. 
Oh. Our time is up here. I have a meeting to attend. I must leave it in 2 minutes and 16 seconds. So, venture into our great city and enjoy yourselves. He's gone. Huh. The old Bailey. If we're going to do this, Mr. Naruhoto, we must leave at once. Sure? Should we move? We can. But first... Miss Susato, can I just ask you something? Oh, I don't like that stance. Careful! From this position, I can perform a Susato takedown in an instant. At least it's not a Susato squash. I know. Mr. Naruhoto, you heard Lord Stronghart. This trial starts Im imminently. If I need to throw you, I will. You know, you could just say, I think we should hurry to the courtroom. If you need to ask me anything, it had better wait until we're at the Old Bailey. I could present the thing to her, but nah. But if it's really funny though? Mr. Sato, can I just ask you something? Okay. It's the same thing. I thought I thought as much. <laughs> no matter where you go, no matter what time you're in, some things never change. Oh, I love it. <laughs> they know that this scene is iconic, don't they? Uh Oh, thank goodness, we're in time. There's still 15 minutes until the trial begins. I never knew a horse-drawn carriage could go so fast. I thought my teeth were going to l rattle loose. Did you hear what I said to the driver when we climbed aboard? Get us to our destination in five minutes, driver, and there's a guinea in it for you. It's one of my favorite lines from the Herlock Sholm stories, and it worked quite perfectly. I'm not sure why you're, why you're so pleased. I thought we were going to die, and we had to pay gold for the privilege. Well, at least we arrived here before the trial started. Yes, I suppose there's that. Anyway, I don't understand it. The court clerk said the defendant should be here. But there's no sign of him at all. Him? Do you know do you know a name? I swear to god, if it's Herlock Sholmes, I'm gonna flip. So this is the old Bailey. Even this uh, even this room for defendants to wait in is is grand. Are you alright, Mr. Narhodo? No, I keep stumbling over my words, thank you. I'm feeling tense, that's all. This place gives me the same sense of foreboding that I remember from the Supreme Court in Japan. An oppressive air, almost as if the building itself is going to crush whoever is about to be sentenced. It feels like only yesterday that I was the one about to be crushed. Yes, whoever the man you're to defend is, I imagine he's feeling very alone at this moment. Top of the morning to you, madame, sir, and the rest of the day to yourself. Willy Wonka? Is that you? Who is this man? <laughs> what a weird design. Oh, God, I, it reminds me of Red White. Oh, jeez. Yeah, so the the pinkish suit and the blue hair. Oh my god, yeah. He's like He's like red white crossed with Willy Wonka. Oh. Well, well, well it seems streetwise so. 
What are you doing following me here? Things are fair desperate, are they? Sorry. But you look at those expressionless faces from the east, are you? Um, we're from Japan, yes. Ah, uh, Japan, is it? Right, say no more. So, how much do you need? He even has rings. Very gaudy rings. Oh my god, I think that's intentional. No, no, we're just here because... No need to explain, fella. I've been there myself, so I have. No place to go, nothing to eat, barely a penny to your name, and all on a strange faraway land. Well, actually, uh, we haven't found a place to stay yet, no. Tis grand, tis grand. Let me start by giving you a thousand guineas, say none now. What? Really? Huh? A thousand guineas? Please, Miss Susato, you don't have to shout. But a thousand guineas is... It's enough to build an entire mansion in the most prestigious area of Tokyo. What? Tis none to me at all. I like to ensure I have sufficient funds to weather a rainy day, you see. I have enough wealth to buy the city of London two or three times over. Could that much rain even fall in one day? Even so, we couldn't possibly accept such a large sum of money. Ah, that hit me in the eye! Uh, uh, who is Ryonosuke? Charon? Don't get me wrong, fella. I'm not giving it you no strings attached. I'll be wanting you to do something for me. Oh? To be honest, it's a little embarrassing. The trial that's about to begin, you see, is for me good self here. I'll be in the dock. So now what I want you to do is come along with me and stand there beside me. Officially, you'd be my lawyer, but that's just a little detail now. Oh, well, the thing is... Don't worry about a thing. All you have to do is stand there next to me, none more. Otherwise, you see, the trial is gonna start without me having any kind of representation at all. So it was true. The Lord Chief Justice wasn't just making it all up. Um, I'm terribly sorry to have to ask, but... Does that mean you're the defendant in this trial? Luster and blazes, to use. Do you just not know who I am? Me? One of London's biggest names? No, sorry, we've only just arrived in the city, you see. <laughs> I see. I suppose it isn't altogether impossible. Well, just next to Hyde Park, there in the center of London, is another beautiful park. Okay, go ahead and say it. I know what you're gonna say. Sorry? A park? What? It's just called McGilded Park, full of blossoming flowers in the spring and singing birds and whatnot. I donated it to the city, so I did. Ah, uh -huh. an entire park in central London? Okay, maybe he's not gonna say what I thought he would say. A city of smiles, that's my vision for London. There's nothing Magnus McGilded wouldn't do for the city and its queer old people. Hmm. I... I'm gonna hazard a guess and say this man is accused of killing one Mr. Hyde. Sure. That's amazing. I mean, really extraordinary. Yeah, I thought he was about to say his name was Jekyll. That's what I was getting at. Ah, uh, but... Ah, they've got the gall to say I'm a good-for-nothing criminal. 
Me, Magnus McGilded. What is the matter with the London police, I ask you? <sighs> Alright, don't pass out. Mr. Naruto? Perhaps now would be a good time to introduce ourselves while the gentleman catches his breath. Good idea. Um, Mr. McGilded, the thing is... We're actually here in London to study British law. We're law students on a study tour from Japan, you see. Ha, ha, ha. So, if you don't have a lawyer for the trial yet, and you'd be happy to put yourself in our hands, we'll do our best. What was I after saying, you daft Egypt? I'm giving you a thousand guineas to stand up there next to me, haven't I? I thought it was five thousand. Do you lower that number? Or... No, I think it was one thousand. Well, yes, but I wasn't really offering to just stand up there next to you. Oh, I think I see what's going on here. Sorry? I know what you're thinking. This chancellor of a fella claims to have more money than the queen. But if that's true, why the blazes can't he hire the finest lawyer in all of England? Because he did it. That's the only explanation. Well? Oh, uh, well... Not at all. Not at all. Although it is a little strange, to be honest. Why you don't have a lawyer, I mean. Oh, that's no, not him. Why you don't have a lawyer, I mean. That would be the fault of the Reaper. The who's a what now? Sorry, did he just say Reaper? Also, before we, before we start this, I had a, another thought. There's another thing that this character reminds me of. The very tall top hat and his kind of dis disproportionately long arms. Oh, this is going to be one hell of a pull and it's going to sound really weird, but... Oh, there's this... Oh, I completely forget the name, but... There's this really weird, creepy character from the game Rayman 2... What was his name? Hocus? Maybe? Um, there was a little green one-eyed monster that, like, think think Mike Wazowski from Monsters, Inc. Like, like, straight up, but he had no legs, just really long arms, and he had a big top hat. And I think his deal was, like, making bargains... Um, yeah, I'm so, this guy reminds me of that for just the weirdest reason, but uh, just, just something that came to mind. I, the Grim Reaper of the Bailey, Lord Barak von Zeeks. He's the prosecutor. Is that Zeeks or Zeeks? I think that's Zeeks. So, okay. We have a, we have a name. Barak Van Zeeks. Van Zeeks. If that's a pun, it's lost on me, but it sounds really cool. That's a cool name. The prosecutor is the Grim Reaper? When Van Zeek stands for the prosecution, they call the accused his sacrificial lambs. And to this day... In every single trial in which he's been the prosecutor, the accused has been damned. What? So it's reached the desperate situation, where there's no one willing to stand in defense against the fella at all. You could say he's a living legend of the Old Bailey. Goodness, Lord Barak von Zeeks. He must be an exceptionally talented prosecutor, then. I want to see this dude. Talented isn't the word you're looking for, madame. 
It's cursed. Cursed? What on earth? The defendant is summoned and is counsel. Please make your way into the courtroom. The trial is about to begin. His counsel? That would be that would be me. Ah, oh, tis time. Well then, fella, don't let me down. Uh, but but I don't know anything about the case. You haven't told me what happened. Until you showed your face here, I'd made up my mind, so I had. Sorry? I decided to have it to defend myself in there. You would have... How would that have worked? Ryonosuke, are you serious? But then you made an appearance, a student of law, wouldn't you know? Tis no accident, I can assure you of that. Tis fate. So don't get cold feet now, please. I literally know nothing about the case or about this man who stands accused. In fact, the only thing I do know is that I can't just turn my back on him. Mr. Naruhoto? The man has no one. He'll have to stand alone in that courtroom, armed with nothing to defend himself. Yes, yeah, something that Kazuma would never have allowed to happen. Counsel for the defense, what are you doing? If you're late for the start of the trial, you will lose your right to stand. I'll be right there. It's happening then. My first trial in the British court. I hope you're watching over me, Kazuma. Because I have no idea how I'm going to manage this. What a great intro to this case so far. This is great. High stakes, high risk, high challenge. Well, that's a little that's a little dramatic, don't you think? Oh, wow. Who are those? Whoa. So this is the highest court in Great Britain, the Old Bailey. The centuries of history in this place are palpable, isn't it? It's so different to the Supreme Court in Japan. It feels both imposing and serene at the same time. The atmosphere almost makes words redundant. Whatever the country, determining a person's guilt or innocence is always a solemn affair. May I say something, Mr. Naruhoto? Oh, yes, what? <laughs> your eyes look ready to pop out of your head again. I know. But I just can't help it. That is a Dracula. That was a Dracula. <laughs> All right. Also, wow. Wait. Is it just me or is this? I swear I've seen a judge who looks just like this before in another game. Okay, so there was th there's a standard judge we all know and love. There's uh, the blonde one who is Canadian for some reason. Um, why do I swear I've seen this man before? Well, this is great. So we have Dracula and we have Santa Claus. Wonderful. Anyway, same old judge voice. Here we go. In the name of Her Majesty the Queen, I hereby declare this court to be in session. We are here today to determine the guilt or innocence of Mr. Magnus McGilded. I now call upon the counsels for the prosecution and defense to declare their willingness to proceed. That is a Dracula. That's Miles Edgeworth, but also a Dracula. <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah, now that I actually look at his face, that is... 
That looks like Miles. Okay, so let's see. I I got I got I got to do British for Miles, but also a little uh, bleh for Dracula. Um. You know what? Let's just let's just default to Miles Edgeworth voice for now. I'll figure out something for this guy. The prosecution is fully prepared. That must be the Reaper of the Bailey. He really does look fully prepared to dispatch his next poor victim to the underworld. Counsel for the defense, you appear to be Eastern. Do you speak English? Uh huh. Oh, yes, of course. Sorry. But he asked if the defense was ready. And I couldn't be further from ready if I tried. <laughs> yeah, that, that's... I see so much of Edgeworth in this man, but also... His face is a lot different at the same time. <laughs> Those eyes please me. Nipponese. They shroud your fear, your doubt, your trepidation. They run wild, clinging to some phantom notion of courage. The quintessential look of a sacrificial lamb. Uh... A cold shiver just ran down my spine all the way to the tips of my toes. Maybe I should voice him more menacingly. Now, Mr. McGilded? Yes, my lord. You stand accused of murder. A capital offense. You could be sent to the gallows if found guilty. Are you quite sure you wish to entrust your defense to this foreigner? As I've always said, my lord, it is a grand thing to give opportunities to the young. Even if the fella is a student from some little island off in the Far East, is it not the British way to ignore the dangers to yourself and give these less fortunate a fair chance? I'd like to think that acts of chivalry do the great British Empire proud. Listen to McGilded, what a fine gentleman London has to him in him. Did you hear he donated 5,000 pounds to the government the other day? Mother, please may we go and play in, this, in the Gilded Park? <laughs> it seems as though everyone in the public gallery is firmly behind Mr. McGilded. That's definitely welcome news, and he certainly has a way with words. I'm surprised he couldn't convince anyone to defend him. Eloquently put, Mr. McGilded, and most laudable sentiments. Now? Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, I'm sure I hardly need remind you that you six members of the public have been selected for your impartiality. Are you ready to proceed? Oh. Oh, there's a lot. Okay. At first I thought, oh, these must be witnesses. I saw them and they're like, oh, right, witnesses. No, this is a straight-up jury. So it's not just the judge I have to convince, it's these colorful fellows as well. Oh, wow. Um... But the the thing that's most striking to me is that, well, okay, I need to kind of get into some spoiler talk here for Ace Attorney 4. Um, the, the overarching plot of what Phoenix Wright was up to in that game, it, did I say Apollo Justice 4? I mean Ace Attorney 4 Apollo Justice, sorry. Uh, what he was up to in that game was trying to reform Japan's legal system by introducing a jury system. Uh, I can only assume that Capcom here, they're implementing that here in this spin-off. 
Uh, no, I, oh, wait. Right, so this game came out after Ace Attorney 5. I can only assume, then, that Ace Attorney 5, yeah, I, I guess Phoenix must have succeeded and there's a jury system, so in terms of this franchise, this would be the second game to have a jury system, but I'm seeing it for the first time, I suppose. At least that's what I assume. Wow. Yes, my lord. The task is to send rotters to the gallows where they belong. I'm more than ready. At the manor, his lordship always says we should dispose of rubbish promptly. Naturally, I agree. This is a maid who works for the gilded? <laughs> Any criminals here will soon be wishing they never set eyes on me. I feel a chill. Oh, don't mind me, my dears. I'll just be getting on with my knitting. Must finish these mitts for my grandson. Uh, Mr. Narahoto? The, those people are... The jury. Yes, that's something we don't have in Japan yet. And you won't have for a long time. That's right. I've only ever read about it. But here in Great Britain... The court's final verdict depends on the opinions of these six jurors. The judge passed a sentence according to the law, but the jurors determine guilt based on common sense. So the defendant is ultimately judged from two completely different points of view. But how exactly do the jurors give their verdict? That I don't know, but... I'm sure it will become clear as the trial progresses. Yes. Prosecutor Van Zeeks. My lord. It's been a number of years since we've seen you here in the courtroom. I thought you'd renounced your fame. I've known as the Reaper of the Bailey, my lord. Infamy rather than fame, I would say. But yes, five years have passed since I last spread my wings in this capacity. He is a Dracula! So, what brings you back? Is there some change of circumstance of which the court should be aware? I leave that to your imagination, my lord. So the Reaper has been out of action for five years. Why did he have to choose today of all days to make a comeback? Don't lose heart, Mr. Narahoto. As you wish, sir. The court nevertheless welcomes your return. Now then, opening statements, I think. A summary of the case, if you please. All right, that, that's a perfect place to end it. Just perfect. Oh, wow, what a strong start this case has. Ooh. <laughs> the stakes already feel dire, and we don't even know what happened here. Uh, just everything about this has just perfectly been orchestrated. I think Stronheart... When Ryunosuke said that he was here to do everything that Kazuma wanted to do, I think Strongheart had a moment of recognition. Indeed, Ryunosuke said that his facial expression changed for a second. I think that Kazuma has been put up to some sort of secret mission. Coming here to London as a lawyer was just one part of his true goal. No, I think the Japanese government put Cosma up to something. And I think Strongheart thinks that Ryunosuke knows? Maybe. That's what I get from that, anyway. And I really like this McGilded fella. He speaks like a, like a streetwise thug. Part of a gang. I can picture someone like him 
pulling a switchblade on you, and yet he's affluent to the extreme. He's one of the richest men around in the richest city in the world. He's he is the point one percent. Um, very interesting combination. I don't think I've ever seen that sort of character archetype combination before in like any media. It's really weird, I, but I like it a lot. Um, I'm excited out of my mind for the, the jury system and seeing how that works. And we have a we have a Dracula. Oh Lord knows, I'm still on my first playthrough of um of Baldur's Gate three. I had a few videos of that on my channel, just like the four, just my first four hours of the game. Um. In my playthrough, I may be romancing Carlac because, of course, everyone romances Carlac. She's the best girl. I love her. She's mine. Stay away. Um, but for my second playthrough, oh yeah, I'm, get, I'm gonna romance Asterion. Vampires, dude. Vampires are hot. <laughs> uh, what, what was talking? Uh, yeah, this video's going on pretty long, so I'll just end it here. I'm Zephyr the Jester. This has been more of the Great Ace Attorney Chronicles. Thank you for watching. Hopefully, I'll catch you next time when we begin this trial. And oh, it's going to be so good. I'm hyped. Until then, please take care.